So one of the more awesome things about a big bagger, for instance, is having the ability to put all of your belongings in the bags and not have to wear a backpack. That's the downside of the bike that I own. So I have to carry a backpack pretty much anywhere I go, especially to work because I have things that I take to work, protective gear that I might use. So like gloves, bandanas, whatever I may need. I have to keep that in a backpack and keep it with me practically everywhere I'm gonna go. So with a bagger, you have that ability to pack away whatever you need. For long trips, it's even better because you can pack a little bag and you're good to go. You can take a trip, you can go anywhere. Now, of course, if you're gonna get a touring pack, which this bike, wow, dude, really? Like, come on, man. Um, with a touring pack, it's even better because you've got a bigger trunk that's on the back of you and you'd have the ability to pack away a sleeping bag, maybe a pillow in that, as well as the bags on the side for a couple of changes of clothes, whatever the case may be. There's actually a uh, YouTuber that does that. Uh, her name is R2 Wheels. It's actually pretty awesome when you think about the concept of it. Nobody thinks about going camping out of a motorcycle. So for people to actually do that and bring that to YouTube, it's pretty impressive. Now, bikes this size can be a little difficult sometimes because people who are not used to them, they don't realize how much room they're taking up on the road. Uh, me being a six foot person, I see over the windshield um, fairly, fairly clearly. But the fact is that this bike is wider. It takes up more room on the road. So you have to be cautious about lean angles into turns and your location in the lanes and things like that. Uh, it's not so much the width of the windshield as much as it is the width of the back. Uh, the fairing doesn't take up any more room than any other fairing that you can get that covers the mirrors and covers your hands uh, while you're riding. But if you've ever ridden a bike and you've taken turns, you know that you don't have any bags. You can lean a little bit more because A, either your pipes don't sit as low to the ground or you don't have the bottom of the bags as low to the ground. So those things can, I guess, hinder you from taking turns at uh, higher rates of speed at a more aggressive angle. One of the things that I don't like are these aftermarket footboards. They didn't come on the nest, but if you can see, they're the chrome plated footboards that are very slippery. And I think that's the only thing I would change on this particular bike. But like I said, it doesn't come as an option on the 2012 Corey Ness Victory Cross Country. So it's an aftermarket part that somebody decided that they were gonna put on the bike. But this bike feels amazing, even at six foot tall. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. And I've got a great little comfort area here. It's way more clear up here over the tank than even on my bike, because I do have a fairing. It's not as big as this fairing. Uh, it doesn't take away as much wind. I've got a little bit more room for air to flow through above the headlight. This is completely enclosed, nearly all the way down three inches below the headlight. So I've got a lot less wind resistance on my chest. Now I still feel it on my shoulders. I still feel it on my forehead. Uh, I can feel the, the helmet kick back every now and then, or you know, maybe my helmet kind of moves a little bit with the wind. But for the most part, I've got clearing of airspace in front of me. So I'm not getting pounded by the wind versus a bike that doesn't have a fairing at all versus a bike with a smaller fairing like mine. Those are the things that you gain with a big cruiser like this, a big bagger like this. This bike feels absolutely amazing on the road. It's completely comfortable. Like I don't feel any of the little bumps that I typically feel on my bike. I don't feel any of the little grooves. And it's so quick, it's responsive. For an eight year old bike, this bike is truly incredible. And for the amount of miles that it has, it's got a long life ahead of it. But let's talk about the downside of Victory. And of course, it's the elephant in the room. Everybody who knows about Victory, everybody who knows about Indian, knows about Polaris, they know the drawback of getting a bike 
like this. An older victory is the same as a newer victory. You could get a 2016, you could find one that's got 7,000 miles and you're like, oh my God, it's like getting a brand new bike. And yes, it absolutely is, except they don't sell any parts for it at Polaris, by the way. you, Polaris. You'll never be able to walk into Polaris and say, I need a, a headlight bezel for my victory cross country. It's just not gonna happen. They're gonna look at you and go, yeah, we don't carry those parts. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never... You have to find companies online that redistribute old parts. They remanufacture them or they make modified versions of it or recreate it or whatever have you. You know, some companies might refurbish old parts and recycle them and sell them for a decent price. You might find some old school shop in your town or in a little smaller town outside of where you live, if you live in a big city, that might sell old used parts from Victory Motorcycles that they just collect and resell. Of course, the downside to that is you might not get the best quality parts. Something like a clip might be broken or the chrome plated paint might be fading away or bubbled or chipped or something like that. Finding a good tank is very difficult for a bike like this because you've got to find somebody that had an accident where the tank didn't get absolutely mangled in the accident. And then you can probably buy that from them. Rework it, fix it, you know, maybe a little bit of cosmetic work and it'll be back to normal. But chances are, anytime you find Victory parts, there's gonna be damage done to them. Because the truth is, these Victory bikes, they don't break down very much. They don't need servicing very much. So the bikes will run forever. Well, figuratively speaking. The only issue you have is, of course, like I said, accidents. When a bike's in an accident, typically most of the parts are going to be in bad shape. The seat might be ripped, the exhaust might be torn off from underneath it. I guess you could say it's a, it's a sacrifice you make getting a bike that could absolutely be basically brand new and be worth every bit of the ride and every bit of the money that you spend on it because it's just that cool of a bike or it's just that great of a performing bike. This bike is amazing and I would buy one even knowing that the parts are hard to come by, even knowing that it's going to be difficult to find shops that want to work on them because they're so difficult to find parts. But as long as you can change the oil and do whatever you need to do to keep it winterized and keep it ready to go, the first sign of uh, spring, hey man, I say go for it. These bikes are absolutely everything you think they are. They're great on the road, they feel good, they catch eyes everywhere you go. People are like, oh my god, dude, what is that? But it's just that powerful of a bike that even if you are afraid of not being able to find parts, the bikes are just so much fun. They truly are. I suggest getting one. So one of the things that I definitely want to discuss is the fact that you get a lot of compliments on a bike with this type of a paint scheme, with this type of graphics, with this type of customization to it. You get a lot of love from people who look at the bike and go, oh my God, that thing is sick. You would be surprised how many people just will break their neck to watch this bike ride by an intersection or if you've got a car next to you or something where people actually appreciate motorcycles the way that I do, they'll see this bike and just absolutely lose their mind because of the paint, because of the scheme, because of the way it looks. And then you've just got that group of people that are just like, oh my God, what kind of bike is that? I've never seen that before. So you get a lot of looks, you get a lot of people that admire the bike. And then, you know, you pull up to a gas station, you're gonna deal with different people that are gonna be like, wow, what is that, man? Hey, that thing looks nice, you know? Uh, this morning, I had to put gas in it um, because I knew I was gonna be riding around just a little bit to finish this video today. So at the gas station, this guy goes, hey man, I love your bike. And I'm just like, you know, hey, this is a moment where I get to actually take credit for this bike and act like it's mine because it's so so nice that it's like you almost don't want to tell people hey it's not my bike you know <laughs> hey take credit for it live in the moment uh let people enjoy what it is you know just by admiring it and looking at it but at the same time you get to kind of take credit for it that's something that it's going to create a memory in their mind that they're going to constantly be like hey i remember when i saw that one guy up here at this gas station uh he had this badass bike man it was so nice it was so clean you know like those are the moments that you look for with bikes 
of any kind you know whether it's yours or somebody else's as well you yep. know like it's just it's fun it's exciting and people acknowledge and appreciate and they say things that make you feel better about it huge shout out to you know my buddy Robert for letting me have the opportunity to do this you know without him giving me the opportunity uh, I would never get the ability to experience what this bike is and what it has to offer but it's been such a joy to ride that I've literally like I said earlier I've literally started thinking I need to add a cross country to my list because it's such a smooth bike and it handles so well that it's like I would I would be doing myself a disservice uh, being a person who is currently in the market for a bigger cruiser with bags uh, being a person who actually has a victory to not give this thing at least its due to say hey it's a possibility that would be a huge disservice to the victory brand as well as what this bike stands for and what it is in whole because it's an amazing bike it does everything really well about the only thing that this particular bike doesn't have that I would want to change aside from the footboards is obviously the exhaust I can't hear it enough I like the radio I like you know the Bluetooth connectivity I like all of that but man not having the uh, not having the loud pipes on it kind of kind of sucks because that's nice but it's not enough people who have ridden before or people who do ride they acknowledge what it is that you're riding and most of the times you can meet really really cool people uh, who either currently ride or have ridden and can share a story you know sometimes it's not about making a friend sometimes it's just about hey having a really cool story with somebody who rides or who has ridden and build up some type of a conversation that you can carry with you and that's a cool piece of bike culture biker culture is really outstanding and man this bike adds to that you know with the the level of perfection that this bike has it's it's so awesome I don't really know what else to say. Uh, the cruise control is outstanding. It's it's like a, a hell of a big adjustment when you can take your right hand off and kind of move it around and get some circulation back. Uh, especially whenever I get my bike. If I do just so happen to go with a cross country in the future, uh, getting that bike, I would want bigger bars. Due to the fact that I have long arms, I don't know that I could deal with this angle. It's not bad. Um, it's it's just it's so incredible. Uh, the the feeling on this bike and just the 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 presence of it on the road, the presence of it, you know, when it comes to like meeting up with people who have bikes and they see it and they're like, oh my god, dude, that thing is gorgeous. And of course, that's what comes with buying a limited edition bike like the Corey Ness series. You're going to have people that are going to be like, dude, I've never seen a bike like that. Man, that thing looks sick. And it's because, simply put, you may be fortunate enough to see one in your life, but you're most likely only going to be fortunate enough to see one in your entire life. They're very limited edition, and quite a few of them have already been in accidents you just can't find them anymore because they're totaled or they're parted out or you know whatever the case may be so the Corey Ness things that are painted on this bike you may find on another bike somewhere else but nothing beats this this is this is a game changer for victory this was a huge win doing the Corey Ness series the Arlen Ness series the way that the Ness family created these bikes they did an amazing job with the design, the fit and finish of it, the polish on it, the paint on it. I mean, everything. It's just, it's insane. It's insane. It's a really great bike. It's a really great bike. Fun to ride. A joy to look at. 
If you're looking for a limited edition bike, definitely consider the Victory. Because the Cross Country is a great bike, and if you take care of it, you keep it serviced, make sure the oil changes are done, and the tires are good, and the brakes are taken care of, man, this bike could last you for many, 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 many years. So, without further ado, I think we just leave it at that, and just enjoy the rest of the ride home, man. Uh, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys that have subscribed, clicking the bell notifications so you guys can stay up to date on all of the future content being dropped on this channel. I've got some other things that I've started really considering doing, like opening up a Patreon. Maybe uh, that's something that you guys could recommend me do. Uh, if you have any comments or any suggestions on that, leave them down below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and until the next ride or drive, peace.